Hey Matt, did you get off work yet? Yeah, I just got home as a matter of fact. How about you? You chilling out? Maxing? Relaxing? Oh cool? You betcha. I've been spoiling myself like a princess lately. Don't get me wrong, I still make sure to keep on top of things around the house. Simple stuff, at least. But I spend most of my time doing sweet F.A. If you're chilling out, you're happy, and if you're happy, I'm happy, babe. You'll have the job of your life on your hands when you give birth to our baby boy. So I want you to relax to the max until then. Get in as much, uh, you time as possible, okay? That means doing stuff you enjoy. Within reason, of course. <laughs> I don't want you doing any bag flips or going on any roller coasters, but well, yeah, you catch my drift. Don't worry. I don't have any bag flips or theme park trips scheduled for the time being. I've been knitting little sweaters and hats for the baby. I even made a sling to wrap our little bundle of joy in so I can still be mobile while keeping an eye out. To tell you the truth, every day is a blast lately. Wow, you did all that? Why don't you prioritize yourself instead of the baby for a change, eh? <laughs> don't worry, sweetie. This is what I enjoy doing the most, so in a way, I am. Thank you, Matt. I know your mom and dad were opposed to me going back to my folks place for a home birth, and I really appreciate you bringing me out here. It's all thanks to you that I'm able to relax and take it easy like this. Don't mention it. Besides, it was never their right to decide in the first place. I know how hard living with my parents can be at the best of times. The last thing I wanted was them giving you a hard time while you were pregnant. You must be sick of my mom with the way she constantly barks orders at you, right? I couldn't have you putting up with that anymore. Especially not now we have our son to think about. You know, she's complaining that she has to do the housework herself now you're gone. The idea of a backside to clean the place up so far out of the question for her that she actually hired a housemaid. Really? I guess it is a big house. I feel like it'd take a whole day to clean the entire place. Right? And who was it who forced you to do just that all this time? I want you to know that when you come back from your folks place after the birth, you don't have to lift a finger. I want you to carry on relaxing and taking it easy for a while. I'll tell Mom to carry on hiring the maid. But Matt, I'm your wife. Is she really gonna be okay with that? Don't worry about my mom. We were only ever supposed to be living with my parents for two years. Once you get home after the birth, those two years will almost be over. Okay, fair enough. In that case, please go ahead and talk to her. I mean, it's not like I mind helping out, but I'm not sure how useful I'd be if I had to juggle housework with raising a newborn baby. So, I think it's better I just focus on our son. Lord knows I'll have my hands full. Of course, I'll still do little bits here and there. Sure, babe, just do whatever you can. And don't demand too much of yourself. If she ever says anything to you, I want you to let me know immediately, okay? I mean it. Don't hesitate. I won't tolerate her causing you any more trouble than she already has. Thank you. Just hearing you say that, it feels like a weight's been lifted from my shoulders. Man, they really did give you a hard time, huh? They never listened to a word you said, and they stopped at nothing to get you to do their bidding. Things are gonna change big time when you come back. Oh yeah, guess what they started doing after you left? Trying to come up with names for our baby, my parents. As if it's a God-given right. Huh? Wait, what? Your mom and dad are coming up with names for our baby? Right? To quote my mom, don't trouble yourself with coming up with a name, dear. Me and your father will take care of it. They never shut up about the baby being the successor to our proud lineage and family name. You think we were aristocrats in freaking medieval Europe? Don't worry though, there's no way I'm letting them get their way. Of course not. The baby's name is important. It's only natural we're the ones who decide on it. You said it. Anyway, how long is it now? It must be less than a month out, right? I can't wait. I wonder what kind of person our son will grow up to be. 
Don't get ahead of yourself, sweetie. He's not even here yet. I can't tell you how excited I am, though. I feel like a kid at Christmas again. I hope it takes after you and not me in the looks department. Come to think of it, it's probably for the best it takes after you personality-wise, too. You are super kind. Why so self-deprecating all of a sudden, sweetie? Our son will be perfect whoever he takes after. Because he's ours. Besides, you're the kind one. Kind to you, maybe? Nuh uh, you're kind to everyone. Oh, sorry. It's almost supper time. I gotta go. Sure thing, babe. Enjoy. One more thing, Matt. Thanks for putting so many hours in at the office for me and the baby. I want you to know we appreciate ya. What the? Where did that come from? I think it every day. It's only right I'll let you know. I'm so happy I married you. You're so kind and thoughtful. Hey, that's my line. You're not just kind either. You have the patience of a saint. Not many people would have what it takes to tolerate living with my parents. But don't think you have to go out of your way to carry on having anything to do with them once you move out. What really matters is mine, yours, and our baby's happiness. That's our real family, right there. Oops, sorry, babe. I'm hopping on. You should go and enjoy your supper. Got it. Okay, sweetie. I'll text you later. Hello there, Chrissy. How's the baby doing? Hey, Elaine. The baby's doing great. He sure is energetic today. I feel like I have a little drummer in my belly. The doctor said he's growing healthy. I'm glad to hear it. I can't deny you giving birth out in the middle of nowhere at your parents' house worries me though. Are you sure this is a good idea? It is really an appropriate medical environment to be giving birth in. It's such a shame if you'd have just listened to my sagely advice and had the birth at the reputable university hospital I oh so kindly recommended You'd have nothing to worry about. You say it's in the middle of nowhere, but the facilities out here aren't too shabby, you know? There's a general hospital nearby. All the reviews I read online were five star. Apparently, they're amazing in emergencies. Even still, I'm not sure you can seriously compare it to a university hospital in the big city. A countryside general hospital seems like a lousy environment to me. That boy in your belly is the heir to be our proud lineage and family name. We'll be in a lot of trouble if you don't bring our little treasure into the world safely. Obviously, that's what I want too. But no matter how thoroughly you plan, the unpredictable will always find a way to happen. All over my son, no matter what. It must be nice having such a nonchalant attitude towards everything. That child will be the successor to my husband's company, I really wish you'd start treating the situation with the gravity it deserves. Excuse me? Surely you don't know that yet. He hasn't even been born yet. Irrelevant? What on earth are you talking about? Of course it has to inherit the company. Matt refused to take it on himself, so who else does that leave us? All my husband's hard work will have been for nothing otherwise. It's your child's responsibility to clean up after the mess his bungling father made. But me and Matt will support our boy in whatever he wants to do. Who are we to try and force him down a predetermined path against his will? If he grows up and decides he wants to inherit the company one day, then great! But there's no guarantee of that happening, so I can't promise anything, and you shouldn't expect me to either. The child could have everything. Just think, the path to company president riches, renown, prestige, all laid out for him before he's even born. Who in their right mind wouldn't jump at the chance? Apart from my useless wet noodle of a son, of course. Ugh. Listen, Chrissy, I won't bore you by going on and on. But the bottom line here is that you're to raise that child as the successor to my husband's company. It's to receive a special education for gifted individuals from an early age. Surely you and my son don't object to that. To be honest, we haven't even thought about what kind of education we're going to give him yet. First and foremost, all that matters to us is that he's born safely and in good health. Ugh, the horror. Ugh, what did I expect from a high school dropout? 
Oh, do forgive me, dear. I wasn't trying to insult or criticize you. It's just that you have to remember that unfortunately, this child will inherit your inferior low IQ genes. That means we have to offset the damage as much as possible by providing it with an elite first-class education as early as we can. You understand that, don't you? Don't worry, Elaine. I understand exactly how you feel about me and my educational history. But me and Matt will decide on how to raise the baby ourselves. Because he's our child. Huh? I've never heard anything so ridiculous. Do you even think before you send me this nonsense? Take a look at my son for heaven's sake. He was able to go to a top class college and enter a major global company thanks to the elite parenting and education I provided him with. Most people would kill for an opportunity to receive this sagely advice of someone as knowledgeable as me. The only reason you have the financial security to be able to live like a lady of leisure as a stay-at-home housewife is because I raised my son into such a fine example of a man. Are you aware of that? Yes, Elaine. And that's not all. We need to discuss the child's name. Me and my husband have been doing some thinking. We decided it's going to be called Matthias. What? Elaine, please forgive me, but... Me and Matt have agreed we'll decide on a name. After the baby's been born and we've seen its face. You've agreed to do what? What's wrong with Matthias? I think it's a delightful name. It's classy, dignified, has an air of tradition. Not like these ridiculous, trendy names that seem to be in fashion these days. I read about someone calling their girl Coconut in one of my magazines the other day. Can you believe that? Matthias is a normal name. What's the problem? Please don't misunderstand me here. I think Matthias is a really nice name. But Matt's name is... well, Matt. It's too similar. Duh! We chose it precisely because it's similar. You imbecile, my son's brilliant, but he has personality problems. We plan on raising little Matthias as Matt II, this time without any of the defects. Wow, you plan on doing what? That's not fair, Elaine. Matt and the baby are different people. That may be so, but it's the child's duty to make up for the failures of his father. He'll be everything my son is and more. Think of him as a kind of replacement. A replacement? I'd really appreciate it if you stop talking about my husband like he has something wrong with him. And if you could stop thinking of my son like he's some tool to be manipulated and used for your own gain. That'd be great. No one's perfect, me and you included. And for better or worse, our son has the right to walk his own path. It's not our place to deprive him of that. Gah, I've had it with you. How dare you answer back to me, your mother-in-law, you little bitch. Do you have any idea who you're speaking to? Who the hell do you think it was who approved yours and Matt's marriage in the first place? Lord knows you're an awful match. You should be thanking your lucky stars I was so kind. If you insist on being so downright impertinent and refusing to show me the respect I deserve as your mother-in-law, I'll have no choice but to rethink my decision. Wow, Elaine. I'm sorry if I upset you. Will you please calm down? I understand how you feel, but we don't think it's fair to decide on our son's future before he's even born. Besides, he's mine and Matt's son, not yours. Good grief, you really are an irredeemable moron. All you need to do is give birth, half-wit. Leave the rest to me and my husband. You clearly don't have the intelligence or common sense to raise him into the fine example of a man he could be with mine and my husband's guidance. So just do as you're told. Look, I'm sorry, but when it comes to my son, I won't back down. Me and Matt will raise him as we see fit, and that's final. Oh, that's final, is it? You think you're so clever, don't you? What on earth has gotten into you all of a sudden? I always knew you were an idiot, but I've never known you to be this darn arrogant. I always thought you were a respectful, quiet girl. I must finally be seeing your true colors. Huh? What benefit do you possibly think a blithering moron like you could bring to your son's life? How dare you talk back to me? Does your arrogance know no bounds? How much do you have to ridicule your aged mother-in-law before you'll be satisfied? 
I'm really not talking back to you or trying to upset you or anything. You gave me your opinion. All I did was give you mine back. Is that not allowed? I wasn't trying to ridicule you. Not at all. That's called talking back. You were still in diapers when I was raising your husband, you insolent little upstart. Do you have any idea how much more I know about children than you? I hope you know that beyond giving birth, you serve absolutely no purpose to this family. If you want me to acknowledge you as my daughter-in-law, then I suggest you tread very, very carefully and do exactly as you're told from now on, because I'll be watching you like a hawk, girly. Chrissy, you wake? Yep, I'm still up. What's up? Did something happen? I know this is really sudden and what I'm about to say will shock you, but I want you to listen carefully. What is it? You need to stay at your parents' place after the birth and never come back here again. We can't let our son anywhere near my mom and dad. Huh? What the... Why would you say that? We can't let our son live with your parents? What's that supposed to mean? I don't even... I'm giving birth the day after tomorrow. Wait, did your mom and dad say something to you? Is that where this is coming from? My parents didn't say anything to me. Listen, I was speaking to the maid yesterday. You know, the girl my mom hired who's always over cleaning the place? Anyway, she told me something. Yeah, apparently my mom and dad are planning on stealing our baby. Stealing our baby? How? There's no way I let that happen. I'll never let anyone take my baby. Yeah, my parents are fully aware of that, but think about this. How would you stop him if you fell so ill you were physically incapable of looking after him? If I fell ill... But I'm fine. All of my medicals came back clear. They're planning on turning you into their own personal slave when you come back. Apparently, they're gonna overwork you as much as possible, so you reach breaking point before our two years stay with them comes to an end. What? Not only that, but they're gonna subject you to an ending torrent of verbal abuse. Day in, day out, until you're not just physically broken, but mentally too. Then they're gonna report you to child protection services. Claim you're unfit to be a mother, and request custody of our boy. Basically, as soon as you come back after the birth, they're gonna cancel the maid so they can palm off all of her duties, and then some onto you. To the point that you're so broken, drained, and worn down that you're no longer capable of looking after yourself, let alone our son. At which point they're gonna swoop in and make their move on him. Oh my god. Are they really that desperate to get their hands on our boy? I mean, I know they're pretty passionate about wanting him to inherit your dad's company. But this crosses the line. I know it does, babe. I'm so sorry. It was a mistake to ever let them move in with us. I only did it because my mom said she'd give us a blessing on the marriage if we moved in with them for two years. But you know what? We never needed a freaking blessing in the first place. She can disappear into a hole for all I care. And she can take my nasty, abusive dad with her. I'm so sorry for everything they put you through. Don't be silly, Matt. I agreed to move in too. It's not like you forced me. It was a 50-50 decision. She's your mom, and I wanted her to acknowledge me as your wife. We did this together. It wasn't just you, so stop blaming yourself, okay? In any case, my mind is made up and my will is resolute. We won't have anything else to do with them after this. They'll be gone from our lives forever. I was reluctant at first, but I thought we'd come to some kind of uh, mutual understanding eventually after living together for a while. But looking back, I know now I was kidding myself. I was naive to think they could ever change. From now on, me and you are going to focus on nothing but ourselves, the baby, and our happiness as a family. And screw anyone who tries to get in our way! I'm with you, honey. I want you to know that we'll always be a team, no matter what. There's nothing I won't do for my baby. 
I'll stop your parents getting their hands on him if it's the last thing I do. Chrissy, when will you be coming back from your parents' house? Hasn't it been long enough already? I thought you were supposed to be coming back last month. How long do you plan on lazing around on mommy's and daddy's dime? I'd also like you to tell me why you've been ignoring my messages and calls. Go on, explain yourself. What's with this rebellious, impertinent attitude of yours? Mom, it's Matt. Huh? Matt? I'm with Chrissy. Ah, yes, of course, I remember now. You told me yesterday you'd be going to see her today. In that case, I want you to pass on a message. Tell her to start fulfilling her duties as your wife. As things stand, she still lives with us. We've managed somehow or other up till now, but things will start getting very difficult for me and your father if she doesn't come home soon. What do I have to say to make you understand? Chrissy isn't your personal housemaid. I never said she was. So why did you force her to spend every waking moment doing the housework for the best part of two years, eh? And if that wasn't bad enough, you always yelled across the house and summoned her like you were some kind of queen, making her wait on your hand and foot, ordering her to make you teas and coffees and take away your dishes when you got done eating. To drop it off in spite of the fact she was cleaning the entire house every single day, you never once said thank you. Everyone knows it's a bright sworn duty to serve her in-laws. Some people might call it old-fashioned or archaic, but it's tradition, and traditions are important. I know exactly how you feel, Mom. I just don't understand it. I have no intention of letting you carry on, forcing her to be yours and Dad's slave. Don't talk silly. Me and your father would be lost without her helping out around the house. She's your wife, and as your wife, she has a duty to serve you and your family like her life depends on it. Stop going easy on her and bring her back to this house this instant. Mom, me and Chrissy won't be coming back home. Excuse me, what did you just say? You won't be coming home? What's that supposed to mean? You mean you're staying with your parents for a while? No, I think you'll understand exactly what it means if you take a look at our bedroom. All of our stuff is gone. We're done living with you. Wait, what? How could you? You wouldn't. You can't. You can't just decide to move out without mine and your father's permission. Who do you think you are? We can and we are. And that's not all. We're cutting off all ties of you and dad and mom. Matt, you stop this nonsense at once. We are your parents. You're our son, our only son. You can't do this. What's your father supposed to do about his company with you gone? Not my problem. I'm sure I can find someone talented enough to hand it over to. Why does it have to be with me in the first place? I've been with a different company for nearly a decade now. How many times do I have to tell you I have no intention of inheriting it before you understand? I'm at my wit's end, Mom. You left me no choice because you refused to listen. In that case, hand over the child. Me and your father will raise that boy into the greatest CEO there ever was. No chance. No chance. Yes, exactly. If you go through this, me and your father are going to have no chance at finding a suitable successor. Don't do this to us. We can't let the company leave the family. All of your father's hard work and his father's... And his father before him gone. Like dust in the wind. That's for you and dad to deal with. Why, you little ingrate. Do you have any idea how hard your father worked to maintain and develop that company? How much blood, sweat and tears went into this prosperity and success? I know how hard he worked and I think he's nothing short of incredible for it. The dad has nothing to do with me and nothing to do with my son. Of course it does. It has everything to do with you. Without the money your father made with that company, you wouldn't have become half the man you are. The company gave you everything and you're about to let some outsider get their grubby hands on it? So what? I'm done doing as I'm told. Ever since I was a kid, I did nothing but follow your orders, like I had no will of my own. I went to the middle school, high school, college, grad school you wanted me to go to. I learned the piano, trumpet, went to calligraphy classes, drank karate, and took private leadership tutoring. All because you and dad wanted me to, I tolerated it all. I didn't complain once, but as soon as I told you there was something I wanted to do, you repudiated me. You mocked and ridiculed me so badly that eventually, 
I lost the courage to even tell you I had dreams of ambitions of my own. Look, son, I accept it. Maybe you did have to tolerate things you didn't want to do from time to time. But if not for that, you wouldn't have grown into the brilliant, successful man you are today. Me and your father worked hard to ensure you'd lead a happy life. No, you forced me to do things I didn't want to do against my will. Of course I'm grateful that you raised me, but what you did was wrong. It's time to stop treating me like a sacrificial lamb to your own failed ambitions. As long as you think the way you do and act the way you act, we have no intention of letting you see your grandson. Tell me where you are, right now. We need to talk. No chance. We're somewhere you and Dad have no hope of finding us. Tell me where. If you refuse to tell me, I'll have no choice but to drive to your office and ask your boss. I wonder what he'd think of that. Is that what you want, Matt? Is it? Do what you like. I don't even work there anymore. Just try not to kick up such a fuss at the cops after coming to arrest you. What? You quit your job? At that major global company? You quit? When? Yep. Actually, this is great. There's nothing stopping you from inheriting your dad's company now. The more I think of it, the more pleased I am. The timing's perfect. If you agree to take over the company, we'll give up on the child. I'll never listen to another word you say. Goodbye, Mom. This will be the last time we ever speak. Wait, what? Matt? Hold your horses, young man. Just wait. Hi, Elaine. It's Chrissy. Matt just gave me back my phone. I wanted to say goodbye for the last time. Chrissy, please, you have to make my son see sense. He'll listen to you, you're his wife. You're a mother now. Surely you understand better than anyone how much pain what Matt's doing is causing me. For sure, there's no denying it. This must suck like hell for you. But I respect my husband's will. It's a shame that you never did end up giving us your blessing, but even still, we don't regret anything. I know it won't be easy, but do your best to forget about your son and grandson. Chrissy, just wait. Please listen to me. If you agree to come home, me and my husband will buy you anything you want. Anything at all. How does that sound? Not only that, but you'll never have to do any housework anymore. For as long as you live. You can laze around on the sofa all day eating Cheetos and watching soap operas for all I care. Do you seriously think any of that sounds appealing to me? Don't treat me like I'm an idiot! Chrissy, I'm begging you, please! My husband will be furious with me if you go through this. I think you already knew this, but he gets violent when he's angry if he finds out you and our son pulled a vanishing act. My life is over! So let me get this straight. You're saying I should sacrifice my son and husband's future to make you happy? You should know that my family is the only thing in this world that matters to me, and you and your husband are not a part of it. We're never coming back there. Please, Chrissy, please. I'll never say anything else about your son's education. You can raise him however you like, I promise. We'll cover all of his tuition fees. Please, I'm begging you, just come back. You have to come back. What will it take for you to give me another chance? I'll give yours and my son's marriage my blessing. I'll acknowledge you as my daughter-in-law. Please, just come back. Are you serious? You plotted to steal my son for crying out loud. You're not my in-laws. You're nothing to me. You can keep your blessings to yourself. My only priority from here on out is to build a happy home full of smiles and laughter with my husband and son. The likes of you and your husband have no place in that. After that, my in-laws panicked and embarked on a frenzied quest to track us down. But apparently they gave up a year later when they heard we'd move abroad. Newborn babies are allowed to fly after eight days, but the flight would have been long, and we didn't want to put our son through any unnecessary stress. Which is why we continued living incognito in the States until he was six months old before escaping overseas. The word escape might be a little misleading, but the reason we actually left the States was for Matt's new job. I heard the in-laws completely lost it when they realized they'd never see their son or grandson again. 
They showed up at my folks' place begging for information on our whereabouts on countless occasions, and Elaine's face was all bruised and swollen every time. I can't tell you how relieved I am that we managed to escape from Matt's violent, controlling dad and his subservient lapdog of a mother. The biggest irony in all this is that his dad's company had been dire straits for years, and unless some miracle-working business genius came along and turned things around, the looming bankruptcy was a far bigger issue than the lack of a successor. Forcing anyone onto a path they don't want to go down is bad enough, but the fact that they were so desperate to palm off a failing company onto a little kid who knew nothing of the world is downright despicable. I don't know whether it was down to Matt's dad's stubbornness or pride, but he showed no signs of relenting even until the very end. I don't know what the future holds for my in-laws, but it's hard to believe two people so horrible their own son felt he had no choice but to cut all ties with them could ever be happy. Unless they do some serious soul searching and change their ways, something tells me we won't be the last people to make a tactical retreatment from their lives. As for me and Matt, we're living in a hectic life of work and child raising abroad. But one thing's for sure, we're the happiest we've ever been, and we wouldn't change it for the world. We're still not completely used to life in a foreign country, but I'm so happy we can finally raise our son without worrying about unwanted interference from third parties. I'll never forget what we had to go through to get here, and I count my lucky stars every day. I'm so grateful for my husband and all of the other amazing people in our lives who are always there to support us. It almost doesn't feel real, but I finally realized my dream of building a happy home full of smiles and laughter with my husband and son. Hey, wait, my stew's gonna boil over. Gotta go!